Hi y'all, Raidwald here. I hope you're doing well. Today I thought I'd upload a video about the non-aggression or non-initiation of force principle, which is, in my opinion, the, the moral framework of libertarianism. Um, I've seen a lot of people online that, that refer to this principle, but don't necessarily understand what it means or seem to be going basically just off the name. So I thought I'd actually take a little time here to explain its role, what it is, what it does, and um, well, and, and to give my own definition and defense of it. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So when I'm talking about the non-initiation of force or the non-aggression principle, I'm I'm taking a, a look at when it's justifiable for any individual to um, to use violence. And so I'm just going to go ahead and instantiate that down to myself, right? Am I justified in using violence for self-defense, right? And by self-defense, I'm including defending my life and health, my liberty, or my property. And obviously, you know, we're throwing in all the normal caveats of it's preferable to use the least violence necessary to uh, to achieve your goal, right? I'm not gonna somebody steals a pencil from me from me. I'm not gonna go nuclear and shoot them in the face. But also with the recognition that once you step down the road of of, uh, of violence, you have to be willing to escalate it as far as the other person will. Um, in other words, you need to be willing to end it. So am, am I justified in defending my life, liberty, and property? Yes, I, I would say yes, unequivocally. Um, next scenario, am I justified in defending another? Let's say I'm, I'm a, a bystander and I, I just happen to see the life, liberty, or property of another being threatened. Am I justified in inserting myself into that situation uh, to defend that other person? Well, I would say as long as I'm pretty, sh as long as I'm sure, have a reasonable uh, certainty uh, that what I'm seeing is in fact someone attacking another person, uh, you know, and where the guilt and where the innocence lies then yes, I'm justified in stepping in, inserting myself into that situation, and violently uh, defending another person. Even, again, all the way to death. Which, to me, brings up a, a very important principle. Proxy violence, right? This could in one way be viewed as the person looking for help from another person, right? asking for defense from someone else. In other, in other words, ordering another to attack someone, to, to utilize violence in their behalf. Is this justified, right, from their standpoint? Well, I would say, again, well, it, it, it depends on the situation, right? Proxy violence, again, just depends on the situation. And in self-defense and defense of others, as we've already gone through, I would say yes. But I would say that there's, there's no moral difference between ordering a death and executing someone, right? That's, and, and I'd say that most of society agrees with this, which is why most people will say that Hitler was personally responsible for the death of six million Jews, right? He didn't personally go around executing them, but he hired others to do that for him. So he is morally accountable for, the, for those deaths. So accepting those principles, now, now we're going to go into some other situations, right? Outside of self-defense or the defense of others, am I justified in ending behavior I don't like? using violence to do so, right? You're picking your nose in public, and I don't like that, so I'm going to punch you in the face. Is that justifiable? Now, you know, maybe it's not picking your nose. Maybe you're making fun of someone or doing something that could be emotionally hurtful to somebody else. Or maybe you're 
smoking a cigarette, which is physically hurtful to yourself. Am I justified in using violence to, to bring an end to that behavior? I would say no. I, I can't do that. Nobody, I don't think uh, that behavior would be socially acceptable by other people either. Um, I would be seen as an aggressor. Okay, so how about encouraging behavior I want from others? So, it honestly, this one's very directly tied to uh, to the the last example. Either way, I would say no to both of these scenarios. I am not justified in ending behavior I don't like in others, or encouraging behavior I want from others through violence. So, if we accept those principles, we can now take them and apply them at a larger scale. For example, let's say that I am some eccentric billionaire, and I decide to start an institution with my own money, um, and I hire a, a whole host of, of employees and pay to train them and arm them and send them out into the world to, to defend other people from violent crime. Am I, am I allowed to do this? I would say, yeah, uh, I am morally justified in myself intervening in situations where people need help. So I'm morally justified in hiring others, as we already discussed, to do that. And I could literally set up a nationwide police force all on my own dime to go out and help people. And, and there would be nothing in this that is inherently immoral of me. Um, you could say... In fact, that I have authority to do it, right? In this sense, I would say authority to act on something is simply just being morally justified in, in, in acting in that way. So I personally am, am morally justified in, in defending others. And each one of the people I hire would also be morally justified in standing in to defend others. So let's go ahead and add another element. Am I authorized to set up a, this as a business and start charging people? Um, setting up my own private security firm that you can uh, subscribe, subscribe to the services of and, and pay me money in, in exchange for my protective services. Well, yes, uh, nobody here has acted outside of their um, authority. Nobody has behaved immorally. Um, nobody has aggressed against anybody else. So let's add another element. What if I started a business a private security firm and then set out a geographic location that I promise to protect everybody within and then demand in exchange for those services payment from everybody within those those boundaries now now here's where we hit a uh, a moral wall right I, I could go around and try to demand stuff from anybody and everybody I want but nobody would take it seriously. Nobody would see it as, as anything legitimate. Why? Because nobody agreed to those services. And now I am being an aggressor. I am demanding payment for a service you didn't ask for with, you know, an implied threat of force or repercussions if you do not comply. Okay, so what if I held an election in those geographic boundaries and won? What if, what if I asked people to vote on whether or not they would like my protective services, and if the vote was yay, I would protect that whole area and extract money from everybody within that area for the services I was providing. Would that be legitimate? Would that be morally justified? Again, I just have to say no here. Um, it doesn't matter if I get a majority or a supermajority. I have to get the consent of every person who wants me to uh, provide my services to them in order to ask for money in, in exchange for, that, for those services. And, and this, I think, cuts to the, uh, to the heart of the issue. Um, I cannot give authority which I do not have. So I cannot hire a government and ask it to act in ways that I'm not authorized or morally justified in, beha in behaving on my own. I mean, if I, as an individual, only have authority to use violence in defense of life, liberty, and property, 
and and by the way I, I have authority to do this with or without anybody else's consent right I don't have to wait for my attackers consent in order to defend my life liberty or property uh, nor do I need to get consent from anybody else's attacker or even wait for explicit attack uh, consent from someone being attacked before I can uh, step in to to, de to defend someone but if I have <clears throat> if I have no authority to reach beyond that using violence then where exactly does government get that authority they're not getting it from any individual are they maybe getting it because it's a group of individuals a collective well the obvious problem here is that every group of individuals is made up of individuals and we run into the same problem no group can have more authority than any individual within that group has to give it but let's let's put that aside and just say well you know if if governments get a uh, gaining additional authorities because of the group because of the collective uh, what prevents those same authorities going to every church and every business and every other organization in which more than one person is uh, a member okay so maybe there's something about the democratic process about having elections that gives this extra authority now well, in that case what excludes businesses in which uh, stockholders vote like why is it that just throwing the term government on something makes you all of a sudden allowed to give authorities which you do not have the the only conceivable way in which I can see a government's uh, authority being legitimate to go beyond the defense of life liberty or property with violence this is the only scenario I can see that would give them authority to do this is if they had the consent the explicit consent of every single person who is going to be affected by whatever laws passed right I, every individual has a right to enter a contract with any terms with any entity at any time and so if if the government wants to you know for example pass a law on the selling of unpackaged cigarettes and to enforce that law with violence then sure if every single person in society consented to that law to abide by that law and consented to the use of force to enforce it in a contract of some sort then okay now you have the authority to do this however the the problem here is precisely that a you don't have explicit consent so you have to find some way of, of uh, arguing that implicit consent has been given but you know what I, you need to define how that's given to everybody and you have to continually receive it from everybody in society because you know some people move out some people move in there's births there's deaths the population is in a constant flux and and on top of that before you go about enforcing any of these laws again I'm speaking specifically just of things that go beyond defense of life liberty or property but anytime you go beyond that and try to enforce it on someone you have to make sure that this is one of those people who actually consented to it otherwise you have no authority to to go beyond these these principles oh and by the way if you are getting everyone's consent through some sort of explicit uh, act of, of consent uh, whether that's uh, entering in through uh, an applied contract or um, an oral contract or a signed contract whatever means you go about doing this if you manage going about getting everyone's consent then why not just treat it as a business right that's what businesses do I can buy an, an, an iPhone I can enter a contract with Apple and it has no effect on you so why don't we just treat government the same all right everyone uh, that's all I have on that topic for today so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it 
If you did, uh, remember to like it, leave all comments below, and uh, if you really liked it, please consider donating to help me keep the lights on. Thanks. Bye.